Hello and thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'll be um, using the Jane Davenport Mermaid markers to actually color this panel that I've already foiled using one of Spellbinder's Glimmer Foil Plates. I think it's called Flower Pattern and I'll link to it in the description box below if it's something that you want to check out. And all I've done is I have um, squeezed out some of the ink from the mermaid marker and squirted some water onto my silicone mat that I'm working on here. And that allows me to mix the water in with the ink to dilute it a little bit and get some lighter tints of that color and then um, kind of control how dark, how deep I want the color to be. But in addition, how much water I actually use because I find that my foiling looks best if I foil onto very smooth paper. And so I'm not using a watercolor paper, but instead I'm just using a super smooth cardstock. And that cardstock isn't really designed like water paper is to take in a lot of water. So I want to avoid any warping or, um, you know, any buckling of the paper. And as well, I don't want to have so much uh, water on the cardstock such that it starts to pill up either. So I want to keep it nice and smooth, nice and flat. And by um, just mixing my ink here, what I can do is apply light washes of the color. Um, not, and you can see I'm hardly using any water at all. And I'll just continue to layer the color, allowing the paper to dry in between each layer. And that way I can start very light and then build up more depth, build up more shadow and dimension by adding uh, more layers of color and deepening and darkening that color by um, just not mixing as much water in with the ink. So I find that this is a really fun way to use the markers because you get a lot more control over um, the shade or the tint of color that you use and I'm only using the one marker but I'm able to get both the highlights and the shadows in and so it, adding the water also allows you to um, create, you know, infinite number of tints and shades um, just using just from the one single marker. And in addition, it allows you to really control how much water you're applying in the event that you're uh, using just plain cardstock like I am here instead of a uh, proper watercolor paper. So... I'm just going to, um, I started off just coloring in the one style of flower, but I felt like that just wasn't enough color. So I'm going to go ahead and color in um, this next style of flower as well. But I'm going to leave all of the branches and all of the leaves white. Um, and I'm really liking this combination of the teal and the gold. I think that... Um, it's a really nice contrast and the colors work really, really well together. So as you can see here, um, you know, those first set of petals have dried. So I'm going in with um, just more intense color and adding um, just little flick marks to create more um, depth and dimension and a little bit of texture on those flower petals. And it's... Uh, it took me quite a while to uh, finish coloring this panel. I'm leaving it in um, full so you can see the entire process, but I did have to speed up this video um, quite a bit just uh, for the sake of time and the length of the video. So here is my panel complete and it's dried. And I have the other elements that I'll be using to finish up this card. So I started off by um, foiling this um, sort of dotted oval pattern. And it's a really nice um, glimmer plate set that also has a coordinating die set so that you can um, cut out frames like I've done here. And the swan is from 
another Spellbinders Glimmer Plate set, which I think is called Graceful Swan. I'll link to it below, but here it is. And this one's really nice because it has um, the coordinating die so that you can also cut out um, your foiling after your foil design after your um you're done with it. And what I'm going to do here is actually die cut, use that seam swan outline die to die cut out of a piece of white foam that I've put double-sided adhesive on both sides. I actually buy these foam sheets are with um, one side of adhesive uh, already on it. So when I want to, I can add um, a the double-sided adhesive tape to uh, the other side. And this makes it really easy for me to prop up this entire swan um, on foam to give it some extra depth and dimension. And for a card like this that I want to keep um, really elegant because it does have all of that gold foiling. Um, I didn't want to just use little pieces of foam. I definitely wanted everything to feel very solid and look very finished, even if you're peering or peeking in from the sides. Um, I am cutting down this uh, colored panel because when I foiled it, I made sure to foil it onto a panel that was larger than my card front, which is a USA2 card, which is um, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I do have my sentiment already foiled out. It reads gorgeous inside and out. And that does come with the swan glimmer um, play and die set and I'm just using a little bit of glitter cardstock that is from um, die cuts with a view uh, it's a small six by six um, pad of glitter paper and it's just really nice I've been um, using it quite a lot lately and it just happened to have a shade of teal that I thought went really well with this particular marker color and so I'm going to go ahead and apply my colored foil panel onto my card base and just start layering up these additional elements right onto um, that panel there. I do have three other videos um, where I've made other cards using some other Jane Davenport media supplies. So if you're interested in seeing um, her pastels and how I've used those and her magic wand colored pencils, uh, feel free to check out those other videos as well. I have them linked in my, uh, in the description box below. So you can uh, check out those individual videos for whichever media supply you're most interested in. I did decide that I wanted to prop the, this oval up and give it a little bit of dimension as well. So I just die cut out of plain cardstock uh, a couple more oval um, layers. And if you don't want to use foam, just additional die cuts are another good way of just stacking up um, the same die cut to add more depth and dimension. And I figure since I do have uh, some extra scraps, I may as well use those up instead of um, using my foam. And um, here what I'm doing is again layering up some more scraps just so that I can add some more uh, depth and dimension behind those two portions of the sentiment banner that are uh, coming off the edge of that oval um, die cut piece. That way once it's adhered down it's nice and solid and it um, is at the same depth or the same level as that oval frame. And I think that that ends up making it just feel and look a lot more polished so that nothing um, sort of collapses or, or bends upward. So uh, everything is nice and flush and level. So th here is my final card and um, I really happy with how it turned out. So if you like this video, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And um, you can always also subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. And that way you'll get a notification whenever I post new videos to my channel.
Thank you again, and until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye!